That's Jessica. I'm Matt. Join us on our first fall canoe trip. We set off from Algonquin's southernmost access, King's Coat Lake. So we're at the access, which you can't see. We traveled north, paddling through the crisp autumn air. Traversed muddy portages and soaked in all the backcountry had to offer. Our destination for four nights, we made it, Byers Lake. After our slog through Tomogamy earlier this season, bit of a mucky, muddy situation, we settled on an easygoing trip where we could slow everything down and relax. Pretty magical place here. Fall colors are really pretty. This is pretty cool. It's like eating these giant worm things. So this is the first of the two campsites. We'll take a look, walk around, see what we see. The fire pit is uh, not doing so well. It is round. Wow. There's like chopped down trees everywhere. Stumps everywhere. You know what this actually is? These are probably actually green. Well, they were green when they tried to burn them. And that's why they didn't burn. That's why they don't chop down trees, because they don't burn, because they're full of water. Got a tent pad here. This is massive. <laughs> very flat. So the tent pad is right there. And Jessica just found a dead tree that could land on a tent that if you put it right here. That could happen in the middle of the night. So just keep an eye out. <laughs> whenever, yeah, whenever you're setting up a, your tent uh, for widow makers as they're called. Hmm. <laughs> That's like a public washroom right there. That's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about killing a tree. Just ripping the birch bark off. So sausages for lunch. See if we can find some firewood that's not green and half burnt. So Jessica's rebuilding the fire pit and uh, clearing it out. It's completely full. Ash. And I'm just searching for some firewood. Oh, look at, look at this right here. I wonder when this fell. It looks pretty recent. And if it's dry. Ooh, it's kind of wet. That's at the bottom. Scrunchy. I'll chop this up. Good twig stove material too. We're way too hungry, so we're gonna make this on a twig stove. I found some twigs. We got some birch bark on the portage. And it was just laying there at the end of it, so grabbed it and used it to start the fire. Old man's beard, you want to hear a crunch. If it's not crunchy, it's too wet and it won't work. Well, it might work, but it would take a while. <laughs>
We're too hungry. We're gonna use the lighter wherever that went. Ah! <laughs> Oh yeah. So we're like 99% sure that this is the butter site based on research online. So we're gonna just stay here and we're gonna check out the other site tomorrow. So let's set up the tent, cue the time lapse. here, a rock, and got a pulley. Since we're here for a couple days, brought the pulley um, and the second rope. It just makes it easier to pull it up and it also makes it easier on the tree branch so he doesn't uh, you know, like friction and rub the bark away. So we're gonna go search for a suitable bear hang. No guaranteed it's gonna come off, it always does, <laughs> but try to give it its best chance. Okay, the branch is way up there. Don't know if uh, I'm gonna be able to do it. We have 50 feet of rope, so. I think it's more than 25 feet up. Oh. <laughs> you didn't see that. Oh. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, there's only this much left, so I don't know if it's gonna make its way down. <laughs> Barely. So that tree is actually, um, or that branch is well over 25 feet above the air. You only need 12 for black bears, that's as far as they can reach, theoretically. I'm gonna clip this onto here. And then I'm gonna run this through here. And I run half of it through. and then pull it up. <laughs> now I'm gonna tie it off the, uh, the main rope. Other end on there. Look how easy that is. Not hurting the tree. So that's well over 12 feet up, six feet from the from the tree trunk here, and any other surrounding trees that could hold a bear or a raccoon or a pine marten. You're actually more worried about. You should be more worried about the small 
the small things getting at your food because they're the, the ones who will actually get at it. Look a little better. <laughs> Bit more room. All right, we're in the water. Heading towards some bushes. Uh, <laughs> um, we're gonna go and look at the other site. Um, we're all set up here and we brought our food with us so we didn't have to hang it. And yeah, we're just gonna go around the lake and check things out and see what's going on. Well, we're at site number two. This is the eastern site. Bad. Laplander. What is it? A Baco, B A H C O, Laplander. It's too bad somebody left that behind. Look at this. There's a shovel. It was like we like to call them poop spades. <laughs> Some fancy grills. Huh? Oh, a grilled basket. Yeah. Benches. Yeah, these are new. These are probably this year. This looks just about as good as ours when we got here. It's a fire hole. <laughs> that could be fixed. <laughs> probably one spot for tenting. It's on a slope. Might be a second back here. Oh yeah, it's kind of rooty. Is that a fire here? Yeah. Thunderbox is a bit more private. <laughs> mm -hmm. It looks to be in a little bit better shape too. Oh, maybe not. It's missing the front, too. The front slab. That's funny. Well used, but has many years to come. It's full. This is not too bad. It does seem like we're on an island, though. Behind it's all, like, marsh. Yeah. Probably can't see it, but... A lot of traveling to shore to get some wood. So we're looking for the dam and we came across a beaver dam. This thing is holding up the whole lake. This is huge. So I guess that'll be for another day to go down there. Oh yeah. Otter team? Can't really tell. They kind of look like raccoons.
getting some footage of a pileated woodpecker. It's the biggest woodpecker, I think, in Canada. It is going to town on the street. Yeah. It's insane how powerful their, like, their strike is. There's just pieces of wood flying off. woodpecker for a bit. It kind of seems like he's eating or she. After looking at the footage and doing some research, I discovered this pileated woodpecker is a male. You can tell because it has a red mustache and the red part on the top of its head runs almost all the way down to its beak. Females lack the red mustache and have a black forehead. the dirt and then swallowing it. There might be bugs in there. It could be an ant's nest or something. But get closer so we can see a side view. It just flew away, but it came back. So we're attempting to walk slowly towards it without scaring. So a lot of people have been asking us how we bring fresh meat into the backcountry uh, without, you know, getting sick or anything like that. So this is our secret. Uh, we freeze everything at home, put it in the deep freeze before we leave. And then we wrap it in newspaper. It's a good insulator and you can just burn it whenever you're done with it. So in here we have a couple sausages. We also have a pound of ground beef. and. That's still frozen. Um, you know, in the summer when it's really hot, this will thaw out, uh, but we just make sure that whatever we're bringing, we cook it really well. So, uh, you know, sausages for like jambalaya or something, that's getting boiled, that's gonna kill off anything that's in there. 
Uh, the ground beef is going to get cooked all the way through, that kind of thing. So uh, we're pretty, pretty happy with it. For supper, we have Eddie's mac and cheese. This is the, uh, the white cheese kind. It's in the purple box, if you're wondering. And it is very, very good. I recommend you trying it at home or on a camping trip. And to supplement this and make it even better, we have some ground beef. Yum. A whole pound of it. Yum. Yeah, I forgot it on the last trip, but this trip, I remembered it. We brought the safe glove this time, not the off glove, because we don't have an oven here, but we're very safe. White gold right there. Dinner is served. Thank you. Very good. Nice and warm. We both have nine, minus nine sleeping bags, so it's uh, going to be a nice toasty night. It's supposed to be chilly every night we're here. We're supposed to have overnight lows just below freezing every night, so yeah, it should keep us warm. She has the water filter in her sleeping bag. I have all the electronics right next to me, trying to keep the batteries warm. I, uh, I took some star photography photos uh, after supper and uh, we just sat by the fire and listened to the owls. There's many owls around here hooting away mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, just waited for the night to come in. Don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. We'll find out when it happens and uh, on that we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.
Good morning. It's a mighty fine morning in Algonquin. Very wet morning. Damp. Just, yeah, damp from the dew and the, the mist off of the water. You could stand down there at the at the shoreline and you could just see it like coming off the, the mist coming off of the water and up into the campsite. So all the wood is dry on the inside, but you gotta burn it in, to the inside. So. <clears throat> Making some breakfast. And then we'll decide what we're gonna do for today. the eggs in this little container. Keep some uh, from breaking. Stomach says mmm too. Oh, yeah, that's good. The wind seems to be picking up a bit, but our fire is keeping us nice and toasty. Breaking news, I've just been told that there's a moose. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a moose. Can you zoom that far? It's kind of cool, just kind of like washing itself, I guess. It's like spraying water everywhere and walking around. It's kind of cold to be walking around in the water, but moose does what a moose does. That was pretty cool.
What's the plan, Stan? Stan? My name's Matt. Who's Stan? Bring in the map. So today we're gonna go down to Gut Rapids and High Falls. In that general area, there's a couple portages involved. They're like 100, 200 meters, very short. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna paddle around, check things out, see what it's like down there. And uh, maybe see more wildlife. Apparently this lake is full of wildlife. We see moose, three deer, uh, woodpeckers galore, like little ones, big ones, they're flying all over the place. The obvious like uh, chipmunks, squirrels, it's great. It's only been like 18 hours. I've seen all that stuff. Pretty rare for me, I'm a pretty, uh, you know, when Matt shows up to the park, the park is notified and everyone exits the vicinity kind of thing. I never really see anything apart from birds. So it's pretty nice to see mammals, <laughs> big mammals. Anyway, we're on to the rapids. First thing we gotta do is get over that beaver dam that we saw yesterday. Portage. It is a 145 meters. Porco Pro. <laughs> Continuing on down the river. It's a windy day. Silky smooth water. Unfortunately, I don't have an ND filter, which would make it like ultra smooth. But maybe one day I'll, I'll make the purchase. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty little place with the the colors are just starting to turn and uh, the sounds, the sights. Nice. Why are we getting out? Because I lied and there's another footage. Thanks. 
so heavy. See that uh, workout sign went back there. This one actually says York River. All right, perfect. There's been a few other signs here, the old paper ones. Now people will know where they are. What is she searching for? Da 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 da! That's lunch. The piece de resistance. Snacks. All right, we got trail mix. I just went to like bulk burn and got the honey roasted nut mix. And there's uh, some dried cranberries and some chocolate chips in there. Come across the beaver dam. This beaver dam like zigzags all the way around us. Keeps going. Keeps going. These beavers really know what they're doing. Holding up this whole body of water. It's crazy and we don't know how to get over it. Like what path to take. Like there's a path there. There's a path there. There's another one here. <laughs> So, uh, I guess we'll hopefully choose the right one. <laughs> We're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> 